I'm Johan Ullmann. I'm a medical doctor and 25 years ago, about a little bit more, I was serving as the flotilla doctor in the first surface attack flotilla. And I did medical checkups on the 19 year old guys when they were going back home to mom after nine months on board the motor torpedo boats and found that 80-85% of them complained of back problems. They said the worst position is the helm. You cannot stand, you cannot sit, there is no way to cope. It, <coughs> it just hurts. Um, that's when I started thinking about this and eventually I started doing research at the Solgenska University Hospital Department for Occupational Orthopedics, where impacts on the human body was measured. The classic method is drilling pins into the spinous process of the vertebra to put the accelerometers on. So through the skin, you go into L2 and L5 with a pin and you screw the accelerometer on it. You put the subject on a platform suspended in rubber strings. You have a pendulum so you can standardize the input and you measure impact. That, that method is not very good if you want to measure on someone at sea uh, for obvious reasons. And uh, so we developed a method where we put the accelerometers on kidney belts and uh, also started trying to develop a system where you could protect people from getting exposed to these impacts. This is what I will be talking about. This is shot, as you can see, from the outside Norway. Uh, some of you have experienced this, some have not, but just as an illustration to what, what uh, it can be like out there. High speed boat operations are no longer limited by the top speed of the vessel. The limiting factors today are the sea keeping and the human factors. So I will, talk, I will not talk about sea keeping or hull design, but I will focus on the human factors, on shock exposure, physical fatigue, injury mechanics, biomechanics, shock mitigation, and if time allows, uh, go into intuitive operator interfaces to increase situational awareness. How you can free some mental capacity for knowing what's going on around you instead of focusing on your controls. So ultimately human factors will determine operational success. People get fatigued on board high-speed boats. Many people also get severe and permanent injuries. Fatigue is a risk factor at sea and in combat. This here is from a study uh, done under the sponsorship of the British Ministry of Defence uh, north of Scotland where two boats were run side by side, uh, one with fixed seats and one with suspension seats. Uh, the subjects were tested before and after the, uh, the run and shuttle run test means you put two poles up on the dock they're blinking and the guys are supposed to run to keep up with the blinking, not very fast. And <clears throat> you measure the distance they can do before they're worn out. And the people who had been exposed fully to the impacts performed 26% lower. They were running 386 yards shorter. 300 and 86 is a lot of yards when someone is shooting at you. Boarding team, 
boarding team boarding. When you do this, you don't want to be fatigued. You need all your stamina to get up the ladder and do the right thing once you peek over the railing. Higher impacts increase impact exposure on crew, of course. Physical fatigue causes risk for mistakes and risk of injuries. Uh, when impacts were measured on these two boats, it was um, a significant difference. And uh, this method here, impact count, impact count index, it's, uh, it counts the number of impacts. Anything below, uh, below 1.6 G was not counted as an impact. Anything above 1.6 G was recorded. And in the shock mitigation seats, it stopped at 4.6 the highest impact. On the uh, unprotected, it went up to around 12. Uh, also, th the total number of impacts were higher on the people in the fixed seats. This illustrates the same thing. Uh, the total number of impacts recorded above 1.6 G was about 460 or something. Uh, in the suspension seats and twice as many in the uh, unsuspended. Um, the boat with the suspension seats was slightly new or it was the same hull but it had better engine and uh, could go faster. Uh, so the input on the um, on the boat was a little bit higher. Uh, this is the deck impact on the two boats. And these are the impacts on the, on the people. So which are the risks of injury? The spine, of course, is subject to this risk. And um, compression forces. everyone is aware of. Lateral forces, shear forces, is more dangerous because the spine is designed to take up impact this way, but not this way. During evolution, it's never been anticipated that we should be exposed to transverse impacts uh, in the magnitude that we do uh, driving cars and high-speed boats. So, what we see are vertebral fractures, we see disc herniations, um, distortion in injuries on the neck. When the head goes flailing around, uh, you can damage a lot of the soft, soft structures around the neck, like in a car whiplash crash. Extremities, people who have spent a few years driving these boats um, wear out their knees. That is quite normal in the Special Forces group. The knees are not designed to take up impact in near stretch position. Even the ankles are at stake. But so standing is not good. Standing increases impact. Sitting is not good. Sitting down in, increase impact forces or vulner, vulnerability on the spine because of the shape of the spine. So why is sitting down bad? Sitting normally puts your spine in a C shape which is the worst position for impact. I will, I will demonstrate.
if you look at how what the normal sitting position looks like. We sit like this. You know you're not supposed to sit like this at your desk. You're supposed to sit like this. If you go to the physiotherapist and ask why your neck hurts after a day at the office, she might tell you that you're not sitting correctly. You should be sitting like this. So office chairs should have a back support, a lumbar support, so you can push the lower back in with lumbar support. That is how office chairs are designed. So if you have a back problem from the office work, it's your own fault because you're not seated like you should. We'll come back to that. But why? Why do you sit like this? Or you even sit like this? I'm sure most of you have been told that you should not sit like this because it's bad for the back. It's not bad for the back. If you have a back problem hurting from a disc herniation, you don't sit like this because it hurts. If it doesn't hurt, it's not bad. It's bad if you get hit from below. So why do we sit like this when we're told to sit like this? If you now all put your knees like this, 90 degrees, feel the tendons here with your fingers. The tendons underneath. Pull the sway of your back in. You sit right upright. When you sit like this, these tendons are tensed. When you relax, they're relaxed, okay? So, these tendons attach here. When they're tensed, they pull the pelvis this way. When the pelvis goes this way, the head goes forward, and we have a C-shaped spine. That's not optimal for sitting in the office. And it's certainly not optimal when you get hit from below with 7G or 14. So um, sitting normally puts your body weight behind your feet where you cannot support it by muscular force, and sitting puts your head in front of the body. Now we'll we'll do an experiment just to show you something else that is interesting. If you all stand up, please. Sorry. We sit down almost. Sit down to, till you have five centimeters left. But don't use your arms. Stay in this position for one minute. <laughs> OK. That is where you are when you need your body to cope with an impact. Okay? We are not very strong here unless we are world champions in downhill skiing or jockeys. Yeah? Okay. So, this is made to design the function of an office chair. Just to make you understand that the principle here is trying to adapt technology to man. Instead of teaching people what is the correct way of sitting, you can sit like this for about 90 seconds, which is enough to take the pictures for textbooks, ergonomic brochures, and product brochures. After 90 seconds, you sit like this. Or you want to sit like this. If what we do here, if we fold the feet back, we relax these muscles, and you can sit in a perfect balance. I have the same posture of the spine as I have in standing. This is where we have the lowest pressure on the discs. This is where we have much higher pressure on the discs. Okay, we want to maintain this. So, do I want to sit like this for eight hours in the office? No. No one wants to sit in one position for eight hours. Seven minutes is the maximum you want to sit in any position. So, can I maintain the shape of the spine 
recline yes if if the spine is supported the right way which is very rarely the case in office chairs so how far can we get go back as far as where the head balance is if i would go too far back i would have to work with muscles to keep my head balanced so for office work if you if you can sit like this typing you can sit like this typing and you can sit like this typing and you don't have to worry about it you just do what feels best is it relevant how it feels yes we were not provided with our senses for any other reason that they should protect the body from harm so if it feels good it most probably is if it hurts it's most probably not good pain is a predictor of incipient injury that's why pain is there when you're subject to the impacts. Your body always reacts naturally to protect itself from the impact. When you go to the doctor next time and the doctor brings out his little hammer to tap your knee, ask the doctor why the reflex is there. Don't ask why he's testing it because you know why he's testing it. But he might have forgotten why the reflex is there. Every time we run or jump, when we land, the landing creates a stretch in the muscles. This stretch, this quick stretch, releases reflexes that make the muscles go into shock absorption mode. So when you're, when you're getting this impact on your feet, not only the legs, but the entire body reacts in protecting itself. And this is why it is essential that you feel the boat's movement with your feet and preferably with your hands, because then the body will absorb the energy. So to optimize this, the trick is to let the body know exactly what it's subject to. Also for the operator, when the operator needs to feel the boat, the movements, the more contact you have with the boat, the more information you get into your brain about what the boat is actually doing. So if you're completely isolated from the boat, going up and down, your control of the boat will not be as precise and as safe as if you feel it. Like when you're riding a motorcycle, you have to feel exactly what happens when you're coming down again. There was a good shot. There was another good shot. I bottomed the seat out on both of those. I'm gonna give it a little bit more pressure now. We lost an engine! Everybody okay? Is everybody okay? We lost two engines! Uh, engine shut down, we hit so hard. Oh, fucking back hurts. If we look at what's happening to this guy at bottoming out, um, He's seated like this. When he gets hit here, the head goes forward. If this is a 7G impact and the head weighs about four and a half to five kilograms without a helmet times seven, it's like having someone sitting on your back head for a short period of time. That is not comfortable and it's not good for you. It's, it's very risky. This is a slow motion 
overlay of that movement, the first impact, and the second impact where the head goes all the way down. We can look at it in slow motion also. Okay. So, suspension seats bottoming out can multiply the impact on the human body by more than three times. So, a 4G impact on the hull can be 14G on the human. So, why is standing up not good? Standing up can also multiply impact on the human by up to three times. This graph here is from uh, a study um, done by US Navy, NAVC, Panama City. Here is uh, the vertical uh, amplitude measured up to 7G impacts. And here is acceleration on the back. So this is the same. This is one to one. Here it's lower on the back. Here it's higher on the back. Here it's three times. So why is that? This has been shown in several studies. This is another study with a 36 foot rib also done in Panama City. Uh, seats were mounted side by side. The guy in the driver's seat in the middle, they were standing. They were not able to use the seat. And uh, here you can see the boat impacts at 3G, the person standing gets a higher impact value, the person in the suspension seat gets a lower. Uh, same thing here, bigger difference, and you can see the delay here. First we have the deck impact, slightly after the guy impacts with the, with the boat, the standing guy, and the suspended guy impacts at a much lower level later in the process. If you calculate the surface under these curves, it's the same. Here is a twin impact. This is not two waves. This is the boat coming down like this or like this, hitting first with a bow or first with a stern. Because the split here bec between these two impacts uh, 0.26 sec seconds to about point it's it's about 100 milliseconds no 10 milliseconds 10 milliseconds that's not two waves that's a twin peak double slam here um, is measured on the boat hull 16g and here is the rebound. The standing guy gets about 5G up the back here. Two impacts very close together before anything in the body can react. Mechanically this is this is just added on. So when you have the maximum compression on the discs you get the second. With the suspension you don't need you don't get that the higher the impacts the higher the difference in exposure between the standing and the protected guy so how can a standing person get higher impacts than the boat itself when the boat goes airborne you're in zero gravity if you're standing like this and the deck disappears under you and you're weightless your legs will stretch so when the impact comes you might hit not every time but once in a while on almost straight legs the flex in the knees come too late and the impact goes all the way up to your to your neck. So when you're seated in the best position where you can be prepared your legs will always stretch but not up to where they're straight and 
the center of gravity over your feet, over your heels preferably, legs and arms bent at impact, you release the reflexes, legs and arms and suspension synergize. We put the brothers side by side, the cones mark where we see, mo see most injuries. This is a C blade designed by Lorne Campbell and what it shows at impact is how these guys on the suspended seats come down and where the guy who's using the straddle seat comes down like this, the guy who is protecting, working too much with his legs still get not the full effect and the guy standing behind gets, gets the gerbil. So, muscle reflexes protect the body at impact, muscles in all the body react adequately, uh, both legs and arms need to absorb impact, the C-shaped posture of the spine and balance of the head are crucial, feet in contact with the deck necessary to trigger the reflexes or they should be resting on a structure that is attached to the deck, not that is attached to the suspension. So full control of the vessel, both, both hands and both feet are needed. Here you can see how the body reacts normally. What about lateral support? That's a question that often comes up. This is a low side support where the upper part can sway sideways. This is if you get side support very high, only your head will move at lateral impact. So the lower the side support, the more the spine can sway sideways. Another question that often comes up, height adjustment. When this is a requirement, we ask, should taller people sit higher or should taller people sit lower? And the answer is often, we don't know, uh, but it has to be height adjustable. The crucial point with height is where your eyes are relative to the sight lines. And if we look at the seated eye height on a very tall person and a very short person, it normally differs very little. Um, can you come up just for one second? If we sit here, stretching, come forward straight up like this, okay, how much does eye height differ? About this much. Okay, is it about this much? Thank you. If we stand, where, are, where is my waist? My legs are too long, that's why I'm so tall. Thank you. So, that means that height adjustment, if needed, should be for the feet because we know where we want the head to be. I don't want to stick my head up in the wind. Shorter guys don't want to lose sight of the bow. We know where we want the head, but when height adjustment is needed, we should have different levels for the feet. Stable, fixed to the hull. Just to illustrate a, a recent advance. This is a way of adjusting the height that takes care of people from very tall to not so tall. And of course, with my long legs, my legs will be more bent from start. But this is, this is within the range. And for most applications, not even the, uh, the footrests are needed. The experience is that in most applications, one height is sufficient for each and every one. What about lo longitudinal adjustment? Well, when, when you're seated, the position of the arms is crucial. I don't want to have my hands down there. I don't want to have my hands down there. I want to have my hands basically here. And whether I'm 160 or 2 meters tall, 
the optimal position is right around here. On a bicycle you don't need to push the saddle back and forth. Practical advice, a seat like this does not need to be moved back and forth. The throttle should be where you don't risk to throttle up when you slam down. The helm should also be where you're so much stronger here than here. So this is around 90 degrees. That's, that's where you have the most power and the most control. When you're seated in a reclined position, it can be useful, just like when you're driving a car. It can be useful to slide the seat back and forth. So, conclusions. Exposure and risks increase with speed. Fatigue limits operations. Seats bottoming, bottoming out multiply impact. Standing can multiply impact up to three times, as well as bottoming out can. Suspension must synergize with a human reflex-based protection system. Posture must, must be optimized. With the correct posture, your spine is much less vulnerable. So it has to be optimized for balance in the C-shape and optimized to release the reflexes. Technology is validated scientifically and in practice over many years. And bottom line, no matter how good the hull is or how good the seats are, if the guy driving the boat makes a big mistake, it can be disastrous. People will get hurt and injured. So crew training is very, very important. Thank you.